Well, first of all, Phil, I just want to sort of garner your, what your initial feelings were when you were driving away from the new lawn on, on Tuesday evening, because it, it is still alive, but did, did, what were your sort of initial thoughts having seen Barrow and, and seen the results that evening? Um, it, was, it was a strange feeling, to tell you the truth, because, um, you know, for all, Barrow certainly showed up. That's twice I've been to see them now, and both times they showed up in a manly kind of fashion. Um, had they been doing that all season, they probably wouldn't have found themselves in the predicament they found themselves. And it, it, it applies to us as well, the same applies to us. If we had turned up <clears throat> all season the way we've turned up in three out of the four games that I've been in, in charge of, um, I don't think we would have been in the same predicament. But football's football, you know. Um, there's a, I don't know, there's a sort of, there's one or two misguided coaches out there, and I'm not naming anybody here, I'm just saying, some people think it's all about playing the beautiful game in, in Division 2 and uh, and that's the way to win titles, if you like. That's the way to win promotion, etc, etc. And uh, they forget about the uh, the physical side of it, you know. And you've got to have both, you know, you've got to have both. But you've got to have a foothold in the competition before you can have the football side for me. And that's probably been our downfall this season without, again, being detrimental to any manager or uh, holding anybody else responsible for this situation apart from myself. Um, but having witnessed what I witnessed against Exeter, which was a tremendous home performance by Barrow, and it bought them a bit of space and time and breathing, um, then they lost the next three, uh, which shows you the reason why they're at the bottom of the table. And then I went to Forest Green and I know Coops very well and he lost his job having been in, in control for five years at uh, Forest Green and done a fantastic job and, and the reins were handed over to the under 23s coach uh, which is probably I don't know maybe one of the main reasons why they lost against Barrow Barrow played with very uh, much more physical strength than what Forest Green had on show Forest Green wanted to play the technical side of the game but didn't earn the right to do that, you know. You, you've got to earn the right in every game of football. And it's not about earning the right when you look at the league table. It's about earning the right to play in any game of football. And that's, uh, that's what they failed to do. But I'm not there to tell them how to play football. I'm not. I was just scouting Barrow. And I left at half-time, if truth be known. Because I thought if, um, if Forrest Green don't show up in the second half, this could be a cricket score. And it, it was heading that way, you know. It, the, just the brutality and the physicality that... The front two, Quigley and Andrew, showed um, almost like a disdain, a, 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 almost like a disrespect of, of anybody they were playing against. And, and rightly so, because of that, they won the game. Um, and then we found ourselves now in a mathematical equation, trying to catch one of the teams above us. Um, and everyone's talking about this eight goal difference, etc., etc. And I've been saying to the players this morning, it's not an eight goal difference, it's, it's less than eight goals, it's probably four or less because by definition, if we win our two games and they lose their two games, which is the only way we can survive, if you take the minimal one nil uh, or one goal difference, then it's four goals that we're trying to find. Uh, and with Scunthorpe getting beat four nil on Tuesday night, it gives you a little bit of hope. That's all we can hang on to at the moment. That's all I can hang on to at the moment. And uh, hence the reason why we're taking a 24-man squad to, uh, to Barrow tomorrow. So with that in mind, you know, explaining the goal difference there, because some people can sort of lose their heads and go, we need to score eight, we need to score this. But clearly, if you win your games, you automatically cut the goal difference, as, as you've rightly said there. So with that in mind, it, it isn't a case of throwing caution to the wind and going gung-ho, is it? It's first and foremost winning the game it's playing it's, it's quite similar it's playing like we did against the Orient uh, with the same attitude uh, I've said to all the players leave your ability at home you don't really need it but that's a ridiculous comment you know leaving your ability at home because that's what wins you the game but your attitude is what you need at the start of every match and your mentality is, has to be spot on and if you've got them two right 
you've got to have a chance of getting something from any game of football, you know. Um, if you take the cup final at the weekend, you know, where Spurs defended for 90 minutes and Man City brought their ability to the table. But Man City have got a great attitude towards the game of football as well and, and they've earned the right to do that and consequently they probably witnessed the easiest 1-0 victory in a cup final that I've ever seen. Um, so what I said to the players is if we maintain that level of attitude and mentality then then we'll give ourselves a, a good chance of winning two games of football. It's as simple as that and if we give ourselves a good chance then I'll, I'll accept that you know but the downside to it is the reason probably why we're in the second division and the reason why we're at the level that we are in the second division is because of the way we performed for the last hour against Colchester, not, not, the, first, not, not the first 30 minutes. Um, and that's, that's life, that's, the, that's a fact, you know. Um, a lot of people said to me, why didn't I play at high, a higher level and, and my ability wouldn't take me any higher. But the reason why I played over 700 games is, was because of my attitude. And that'll, that'll be the same in my managerial career, my coaching career, exactly the same. I demand the right kind of attitude when you cross the white line. And then if you can play the wonderful game, get on with it, you know. Uh, I'll pick you every week. But uh, we've got to go on that coach tomorrow and um, travel the length and breadth of the country uh, to a place that's not going to be very welcoming, uh, to a side that's rightly so now survived. Uh, by performing well on Tuesday and fingers crossed we hope they they think they've done enough and uh, and fingers crossed I'm hoping that we bring the same att attitude and mentality that we did against um, late Norrie in particular. Yeah, a lot of people were, were taken by the performance of Terrell Egbury last week and obviously Matt Rush coming on and scoring the goal as, as, as well but I'm wondering from the way you're talking about physicality with respect to those two lads and, and some of the other young you are looking for, to your experienced players to do the bulk of the work at the weekend not, not necessarily you know the, when I talk about physicality it's everything you know and the size of the heart is, is oh, it's the biggest thing that you can have you know forget about six foot six if you've got Tyrrell Egbury's heart and he has got a massive heart you know he'll go into any fight uh, with anybody and um, and he won't lie down he, you know, he won't suffer fools he, he wants to terrorise you if you're a fullback. he wants you, you to have a hard time because of the way he is uh, pace wise and running at you and closing down but his heart is the biggest part of, of Tyrrell you know and what I mean by that is he's brave he's um, he's priceless in the changing room you know he takes so much flack so much stick and he just keeps on smiling and bouncing back and as a fullback I would hate to, hate it to have played against him because he's just in your face for 95 minutes and you know this, just because he's 5 foot 4 whatever whatever height he is that for me um, is not the only physical detriment I would say that Tyrrell Egbury has he's just he's a massive player to us end of story Is Timothy Dieng available to you this weekend or not? Yeah, um, Dieng's came through a lot of fitness work this week. Uh, not really trained with the first team, but he's he's on the coach, he's on the bus traveling, and uh, so is um, so is Ferguson, uh, which is was a pleasant surprise, you know. Fergie felt his calf in the game. Um, he thought he had strained it, but you know, in hindsight, it just uh, it's a uh, an awareness of it, you know. And he's trained on the. Uh, he ran on the training ground today, he didn't train with the first team, but uh, himself, Ferguson and Dieng will be on the coach. And just finally for me, Phil, obviously Southend have had to, a hell of a lot of injuries to deal with this season. You've come in and basically had to you know, almost patch players up and say, please go out there and, and, and do me a job. I never say I please, wonder... I never say please, but go on. <laughs> I just wonder whether it seems to have been a real grind this season, you know, games almost Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday for a long spell of the season. Everything that's been going on in the world outside, no fans uh, being able to be in and everything everything's people's going through. I just wonder if it, if you know, the players mentally and physically have almost reached the end of their tether. We, we've obviously got to hope they can go another two games. But it, but it has been, and people will probably go, oh, poor footballers <laughs> playing the violin. But <laughs> it, it has been really tough, hasn't it? You know, because of everything that's been going on, it, it does seem to have been a, a hell of a long season. I think the tougher it is, the better the player, you know, as far as I'm concerned. They're the ones I remember, you know, whenever... I always remember the good moments in my career and, 
as a player, coach or a manager and, and you're surrounded with mentality similar to yours and if you have that collective you've got a great chance. Um, when I've came into this, into this club there was far too many people in the uh, treatment room and, and probably, I'm not going to say hiding in the treatment room but if you're not prepared to run through the pain barrier, you know, drive yourself into tough situations and out the other side, then you're, you're not the type of player I wanted the football club. And um, I do, I'm, I'm absolutely convinced that if we had five and a half, six thousand supporters there on a week Saturday uh, in the last game of the season, they'd be thinking exactly the same. You know, what is, what is wrong with you? You've got 90 minutes of football to keep us in this division, that kind of mentality. But at the same time, the, the same supporters are frustrated because they've had 45 games of keeping us in this division and they haven't seen enough. Um, I've seen enough. I've certainly seen enough in the four games that I've been in charge and certainly in three and a half of them uh, with sufficient quality and sufficient mentality and work rate and, and all them lovely words, desire and whatever. Um, I've seen enough to say that this, this team should have been middle of the table. But because of that treatment room, it's probably the reason why we're not. Um, when it's too easy to go into the uh, treatment room, it should be a difficult place to be in, mentally and physically.